Welcome. In this video I wanted to go over a way that you can batch copy DV tapes to a computer. So this would be for anyone that has a lot of tapes. So say you have a box of these, say you have like 50 of them, and you want to convert these over to MP4, you know, for storing. Because these tapes take up a lot of room, and you can compress these down and, you know, put it on a micro SD card even, or something like that. So this is a little bit more advanced, but I don't want to discourage anyone from trying it if it's something that could be useful to them. So you'll need a couple different things. You'll need a computer with FireWire on it. So I'll be using a 2012 MacBook Pro. It's an ideal computer because it has FireWire. It also has USB 3.0. So what we'll be doing is we'll be installing Linux on a thumb drive like this. And this is a Samsung bar. And I'll put a link in the description to this USB drive. It's a very fast drive. I really like it. And we'll install Linux on this. We'll boot the Mac. And then we'll be running some commands of the command line to copy the tape off of here. So I know you can plug this into your Mac, hook it into iMovie, and click buttons and have it happen. But if you have a lot of tapes to do, this procedure is going to be a lot faster for you. Because you can hit some buttons, you can walk away, it'll do all the work, and then when you come back, you can swap the tapes out and start over again. So I try to be thorough when I explain things, but if there's anything you're missing from this, or you have any confusion, you know, drop a comment below because I can't include everything in this video, but I want it to be accessible if someone finds this to be useful. So I'll be using two flash drives. I have this Samsung bar. It's 128 gigabytes. I have a 32 gigabyte version. That would probably work too. So one of these mini DV tapes, I think is around 13 gigabytes. So I could store quite a few on this USB drive. So what we're going to be doing is copying the tapes from the video camera to the drive, but this isn't really readable by Macs and PCs. So a quick solution there is I'm going to be using a second USB drive. This is just a UltraFit, I think it's called, Samsung UltraFit. This is a USB 3.0 drive too. This is 32 gigabytes. The performance isn't quite as good on this. But after I copy these off, I'll convert them to MP4 and then we'll copy them onto this flash drive. You could also copy them over the network. You could probably copy them to Google Drive or if you have a network share, there's lots of ways you can copy the files off once we transfer them to the flash drive. So the things you'll need, you'll need a computer with FireWire. I'm using a MacBook Pro, but you can also use a PC when I originally did this years ago, I actually used an HP with a FireWire port on it. The older Sony Vios had FireWire ports. Using a computer with USB 3.0 will be ideal because it'll work better. I don't know if this would work on USB 2.0 actually, but if you have an old computer you're not using that has FireWire on it, you could full on it install Linux on it. What I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be using Linux on the drive and then once you pull this out, your computer will boot back into Mac or PC, whatever you're using. So the camera will have a FireWire port on it, or here it says DV, or I think it's iLink was Sony's way of describing it. So you'll need a cable that plugs into there. So I have two variants here. This is the one that a person might have used on a Mac back in 2000. So this would plug in here, and this will plug into the computer. My 2012 MacBook Pro has FireWire 800, which uses this connector. So this one plugs into the camera, this one plugs into the computer. Let me get these three connectors up here. So these are the three you're likely to run into. You're typically going to find this connector. It's a four pin connector on the camera. You'll also often find these on something like a Sony Vio. They use these smaller connectors. So you want this on at least one end of your cable to plug into the camera. And then if you have something like a Sony Vio, you want this connector on the other end too. And then you have this six pin. You'll want that if you have an older Mac, it will run the six pin firewire cable. So you'll want one of these on each end, like so. And then if you have the newer ones, you can use the firewire 800. So I have a 2012 MacBook Pro and a 2012 Mac Mini that both have this firewire 800, and that's a nine pin connector. So when you're searching for these on Amazon or such, you want to go, this is four pin, six pin, and nine pin. So look at what you need and you can Google, you know, four pin to six pin cable, and you should be able to find what you need. So I'll be using this cable. And on this camera, this is a Panasonic DV camera. There's a little door you pull back or a little cover and you plug it in down here like so. And then the other end will plug into the computer. So different cameras are gonna have different ports you plug it into. It could be anywhere, it could be hidden. Sometimes they'll have little doors around so you want to do that. And then I have this on the play mode and then I need to turn it on when I'm actually doing the transfer. And actually I can load the tape in now. Okay, so when I'm ready to do the transfer, I'll turn that to on and then we'll be ready to go. 
So now I'm going to get on my computer and I'll install Linux on this and then we'll boot from it and we'll transfer the video. Okay, there's two pieces of software I want to download to set up the USB drive to boot Linux. The first is Etcher, so I'll put a link in the description of these links. And also put a link to my website below where I'll have the commands I'm typing later so you don't have to copy them from the screen. So if you go to Etcher, you can go to download for Mac OS and you can download and install that. It's pretty straightforward if you've ever installed anything on your computer. And you can download this for Mac or Windows or Linux, I think is the system, let's see. Yeah, so while I'm doing this on a Mac, the instructions are going to be very similar for Windows. So you download and install that and then we need a Linux distribution. So there are many out there. There's Ubuntu, Arch, I mean, there's all these different distributions. The one I'm going to use in this video is actually Raspberry Pi OS. So if you're not familiar, Raspberry Pi is a small computer and it has a system that runs on it called Raspberry Pi OS, but they make a version of that that runs on Macs and Windows. And I'm not saying it's the best for this task, but it works for this task, so that's why I'm using it. So you want to go down here and you can see where it says download for Mac OS, download for Windows, download for Ubuntu. So you can download the version for your system and it will download an image file. So once you've downloaded and installed Etcher and you've downloaded the image, you want to open up Etcher. I'm going to click on flash from file and I've downloaded mine to this ISOs folder. I've already downloaded it, but yours will probably be in your downloads folder if you just downloaded it. So I have lots of copies here, but I'm going to be using this Raspi OS Buster i386 and that would be the Intel version. So I'll choose that, I'll hit open. I'll hit select target. I'll insert my USB drive. It showed up here. I'll check it and I'll hit select one and then I'll hit flash. And it says warning you're about to erase an unusually large drive and this will erase the drive. So I do want to do that, I'll say yes. Okay, it's gonna ask for my password so I'll enter that. So this will write the image to the drive and then it will verify it. And then once that's done, we can pull it out. So I also had that SanDisk Fit drive, the 32 gigabyte drive, and that you would want to stick in your computer and run whatever utility you can to format it. You probably want it formatted as FAT32 because you could read that on all sorts of different systems. And if you don't know how to do that, you could Google for it. You should be able to find videos. It's pretty straightforward. But if you do have trouble with it, let me know and I can try and help you out. Okay, that's finished. I'll hit eject. I'll close out of this. I'll pull the drive out of the computer and then we'll head over to my Mac to boot this up. Okay, so over at my Mac, I'm going to stick this in the USB port. I'm going to press the power button, then I'll hold down option. You'll see this screen come up. I'm just going to press the arrow key once to the right and that will choose the EFI boot. Okay, so we'll have this menu here and it gives us a couple of different options. And we want to choose the first one, run with persistence. So this will boot the system from the USB drive, but using persistence, it will store and remember anything we use. So it'll be just like using a desktop computer. So if you're doing this on a PC, it's going to be a little different for every PC. So I don't currently have a PC with FireWire on it, I used to, but I'm going to demonstrate on an Intel NUC computer. I have the flash drive plugged into it. I'm going to power it on. On the Intel NUC, I'll press F10 when it boots, and that will bring up the boot menu. Okay, so I have two options here. I have the UEFI SATA and the UEFI USB. So I'll go to the USB, I'll hit enter, and we have the screen where it says run with persistence. So once this boots up, it'll be the same as it is on the Mac. Okay, the system's booted up into the Raspberry Pi desktop, and it has a little setup assistance here, so I'll click through it. I'll hit next. I'll choose my country, if I can do that. United States, American English, and time zone is Central, or Chicago. I'll click use English language and use US keyboard and you can choose whatever you need for your country. I'll hit next. If it wants me to change my password, I don't really care about that right now, I'll hit next. I'll skip Wi-Fi. I don't want to update software right now, so I'll say skip and I'll hit done. Okay, so I want to change a setting on here so the screen doesn't go blank. So I'll go to the Pi, I'll go to preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, display, and I'll disable screen blanking. I'll hit okay. Now it's going to want to reboot, so I'll hit yes. And when it reboots, I'll hold down option again so I can choose the EFI boot. Okay, the system is booted up now, so I'll open up a terminal. 
And I have this plugged into Ethernet, but if you are using Wi-Fi, you would want to go up to this menu here and turn on Wi-Fi and set the, all that up. So in order to transfer from the tape, I want to install the dvgrab software. So I want to type sudo space apt space update. I'll hit enter, and that will update the package list on the Raspberry Pi OS. Clear my screen. Next, I'll type sudo space apt space install space dvgrab. You can also type ffmpeg here. We'll need that later, but it's already installed on this system. But if you're using a different system, it may not be installed and it doesn't hurt to put it here. Okay, that's completed. I'll clear my screen. So I'm going through this tutorial as if you're going to transfer a lot of tapes. So first thing I'll do here is I'll type CD space and then desktop and that's a capital D, and then I'll make a directory. So I'll type mkdir space, and I'll call this tape underscore 20. That's what I have it labeled, okay? And you can also just right click on your desktop and say new folder. I mean, that's certainly a viable way to do it. Next, I'll type cd space tape underscore 20, and this is the directory where I want to store tape 20. So I have the DV camera plugged in with Firewire. I'll turn it on, and mine is on play mode. I'm not sure how different cameras work. You may need it on a specific mode. So in order to transfer the videos, I'll type in DV grab. Actually, I'll clear my screen here so it's easier to read. I'll type DV grab space dash show status space dash t and t will use the time code from the tape to name your files and if you had your time and date set right on your camera when you took the video it will actually name the files that so you'll be able to tell when the video was taken i'll type space dash a and this will split the video apart when you have a new recording so for every time you hit that start stop button, it will create a new file. And you can leave that out and it will just create the file continuously. Now this will cap the files at one gigabyte. You can increase that by typing dash S and then you can say 4,000 for four gigabytes. Now if you're using FAT32 file system on a thumb drive and you want to copy the DV files over, you have to be careful about how big your file sizes are. But I'll actually be compressing these DV files and I don't expect any of them to be too large. So I'll leave that out. And then next I'll type dash rewind. So I'll hit enter. And what this will do is it will rewind the tape and then it will start capturing the video. So one of the disadvantages of DV capture is it happens in real time. So if you have an hour long tape, it's going to take an hour to transfer over. So I'll open up this little folder here. And we can see the file it's creating. Okay, you can see it just switched to a new file. So that would have been a time that I hit stop and start on the camera. Okay, so if you're batch converting, you'll just want to let this run till the whole tape is run through. But I'm going to hit control C to cancel this because I've done enough here to demonstrate how it works. So now what you could do is you could type CD space period period. That will take you back a directory and then we could say MKDIR tape underscore 21. Then we can type cd space tape underscore 21. There we go. And then if you want to run the previous command, you just press the up arrow a couple times and it will take you back through the history of what you typed in. And we have the DV grab statement we typed before. So I'd swap out the tape. I would hit enter again and it would import the next tape. So I'll go down a directory. So now if you want to find out how much space this is taking up, you can type du space dash sh space and then asterisk. If we can see here that tape 20 is taking up 358 megabytes of space. So you want to be cognizant of how much space you have on your drive. This flash drive is 128 gigabytes, so I have plenty of margin right now. But a full DV tape could take 13 gigabytes. So I might be able to play these. I'm not sure. Let me try. I can. I actually have a double monitor hooked up here. It's playing on the other monitor. I'll drag it over. There we go. But DV files take up a ton of room. So what I want to do is convert these over to MP4. So I'll go back into my tape 20 directory. Clear my screen and I'll run a statement here. I'll type four space I space in space asterisk dot DV and then semicolon space do space FFmpeg space dash I 
space quote dollar sign i quote space dash vf so this i is the input so this is going to input all of the db files and it's going to do it one at a time for each file then vf is video filter and then we'll type yadif and yadif is a deinterlacing filter so yadif stands for yet another deinterlacing filter because this dv cam is interlaced video then i'll type space quote dollar sign left brace i percent sign period asterisk right brace dot mp4 then a quote semicolon and done and again i'll have this on my website so you could just pull the website up and copy and paste it hopefully i type this right i'll hit enter and this will start converting the files so i'll let that run through you can see at the end here it says speed is 1.12 now you could copy these over to uh, mac or pc and convert them there also but if you want to get them smaller before you convert them over, you can convert them here right in Linux. There are also lots of options you could use with FFmpeg. I'm using mostly the defaults, and it gives pretty good performance. But that could be a whole nother series or video. Okay, that is finished. I'll drag this out of the way. So you can see here in our folder, we have the DV versions and the MP4 versions. So you can look at the size difference here. The DV version here was 90 megabytes and the MP4 is 14 megabytes. Here you have 63 megabytes versus 7 megabytes, 174 megabytes versus 23, and 29 versus 3.5. Now you could potentially be losing a little quality, but I find that the MP4 versions are pretty darn good. So I'll just open this up, and here you can see the video. And that's obviously not HD video. We can actually type FF probe and we'll type in the name of one of those files. And you can see the stats on this file here. So we have H.264, it's 720 by 480, 29.97 frames per second. And then our audio is AAC, 48K Hertz, stereo, 120 kilobits per second. So you could adjust these parameters when you encode this. You can Google on how to do some of that. Like if you want to change the bitrate of the audio, you can set those parameters in FFmpeg. So now that I have these copied over how I want, I can insert that flash drive I created, the UltraFit. Uh, 32 gigabyte drive and this will mount up to your system just like any other drive so I'll hit OK and then I can drag these files over and I'm just going to drag the mp4 ones and those will copy over so now I can take that flash drive out and I can stick it in a Mac or PC and I have all my mp4 files there now if you want to delete the DV files you can do that on the command line super easy you just type rm space asterisk dot dv and hit enter now if you type that wrong so say you typed it with a space in there on accident you're going to delete all your files in that directory. So you need to be careful with the remove command. So if you have a big pile of tapes to convert, you can do this how you want. You can do one at a time. You can convert them all to DV at one time and then go through and convert them to MP4 later. And I put these in different directories, but you could put them all in the same directory. I mean, if you have random stuff on them anyway, you could put them all in the same directory, get all the DV files in the same directory and convert them all to MP4 at the same time. And then later you can go back through them and look at them and rename them to whatever you want them to be. But it does have that date and timestamp on there. So I can see that I took these at on May 26th, 2004 at 6.01 p.m. So when I'm finished here, I can just go up to the Raspberry Pi logo. I'll go to log out and I will hit shut down. That'll shut down the computer. I'll take out the flash drives. I'll restart my Mac and it'll be back to its Mac system. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Hopefully this is helpful for people who have a lot of DV tapes and they're wanting to convert them over without having to go into something like an iMovie and then do something to format them to get them out and everything. This technique has a little bit of setup time, but once you get it set up, it's very easy to use. But if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.